Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Jordan. I'm from Storage Review. I've uh, got two quick presentations for you today. The first one is uh, about the work that we did with Solidime and the Cheetah Raid, uh, specifically around our demo that we had at FMS. Um, so jumping into it real quick, because we're limited on time. Cheetah Raid, for anyone who's unfamiliar, they specialize in high performance, uh, small form factor stuff, mostly ruggedized. They do a lot of military contract stuff, defense work. Um, most notably, they've got a unit working inside the uh, P-8 Poseidon, which is like a submarine hunter killer type aircraft role. And then they do a lot of work in the uh, autonomous vehicle industry as well, which we've heard a lot about today. Uh, looking at their portfolio uh, across the top, we're going to talk first about the edge boxes, uh, the kind of appliances that you would find at the edge. And then we'll get into the data center side shortly. Um, who are we? Who are Storage Review? Uh, we're independent uh, storage authority. We do in-depth news coverage uh, on all kinds of enterprise hardware from storage to compute to AI. Uh, we do all of our own independent testing and validation. We like to put stuff in interesting scenarios that it may never have been thought about to be put in before. And then we've got an ex uh, exceptional social media presence. Uh, you guys may know Brian Beeler from our side. Um, and then what sets us apart is uh, we do have a Kevin, and uh, here he is eating a sandwich. <laughs> so <laughs> the Cheetah Ray Drive Canister, uh, it's a proprietary canister. It's got a ruggedized connector. It's got these little screw tabs on it. So you can see in the top right and the left side there, uh, it can hold four NVMe drives. So we did some testing with these. Uh, we were able to cram in the uh, 30 terabyte drives at the time. Uh, but with the 60 uh, terabytes, you could, you know, conceivably get quite a bit of data in there, 120 uh, terabytes in there. Looking at it from like an autonomous vehicle use case, we talked a lot earlier about the amount of data that you collect from all the different sensors, LIDARs, radars, cameras, vehicle sensors, uh, command and control responses and stuff like that. So being able to ingest that and store that and keep the vehicles out on the road for a longer amount of time with the QLC is turning out to be really valuable for these folks. And then being able to grab it and move it out and back into the data center for additional processing with this platform is been an exceptional advantage for both the self-driving industry as well as the defense industry. Um, so again, thinking through the Cheetah Raid profile, we talked about the edge side. We'll talk about the data center stuff here and moving that canister back in. And that kind of comes up to the old sneaker net advantage. So with four of the 60 terabyte drives in there, assuming it takes you 25 minutes to pull it out of the car, stop and grab a cup of coffee and hang out by the water cooler, you're looking at a 1,280 gigabit a second throughput to move that amount of data back to the data center. So uh, as the old adage says, never underestimate the bandwidth of a station wagon full of solid iron QLC hurling down the highway. So back in the data center, now that we're here, it's ready and we've got the data to back up. We've got a lot of numbers on it. We did some uh, independent validation on the 30 ter terabyte drives uh, about eight or nine months ago now. Um, Solidime did ask me to remind you that they're formerly Intel, but they're definitely Solidime now. <laughs> um, so the data that we used, we ran a calculation. We did 100 trillion digits of high calculation. Um, the, this takes a lot of a uh, lot of lot of pieces to come together. We had the density problem, uh, which QLC actually helped solve to allow us to do this in one box. We were able to fit 19 of the 30 terabyte drives in there, which was roughly a half a petabyte of formatted space. Uh, it took us roughly 55 days to do it. Um, the in wall, the write out time to write the data out, the final file, which is a hundred petabyte file, took a little bit longer. Um, everybody always asks, what's the 100 trillion digit? And it's a little melodramatic. It's just a zero. But where this gets interesting is the amount of logical disk that was needed in the swap space. We ended up using 468 terabytes of our um, almost half a petabyte available uh, as part of the swap space. And our counters were pretty impressive. We saw, you know, 66 petabytes, over, over 66 petabytes of information written through these disks. So looking at each drive level, um, we saw an average of about 29.29 .29 terabytes a day. Uh, you can pick this part, uh, this graph apart, it's available on storagereview.com and it just shows the individual counters. Um, what we did from here is we looked at what our 
uh, Crystal Disk info showed us. And we, after putting that much data through the drives, we only hit about 3% of the performance uh, or 3% of the health status rather on the drives over that uh, almost 60 day period. So QLC has got the endurance extrapolating that out. That would be like almost a decade at this workload of endurance before you would start running into health issues. So what does that mean for back on the edge for QLC? Um, if we think about maybe like cameras and capture uh, and how that would work out. So just taking kind of back of the napkin math, uh, 16,000 kilobit a second stream for some sort of raw 4K, uh, about 172 gigs a day in capture. So at our demonstrated Pi workload, you'd need a significant number, probably like 150 to 170 cameras uh, generating gigabytes per second for nearly a decade to exhaust it. So we're gonna need a little bit bigger self-driving car. Thinking about the cheetah rate platform now, when we add those back in, we've got untapped capacity in here. We've got the NVMe uh, RAID caddies where Per caddy, we were able to see about 14 gigs a second read and 13.1 write per canister. Um, we've got Epic Milan CPUs in there, saturating it with uh, synthetic loads like iometer to simulate and maximize the performance. Uh, we've got a lot of overheads, so we decided to uh, you know take a look at what else we have, and we got some unused PCI lanes in there as well, so we can throw in things like accelerators to do some inferencing at the edge. Specifically, we took a look at the NVIDIA A2. And because we're talking about a lot of AI and edge inferencing, we took a look uh, and brought in YOLO V8, uh, which is a computer vision model. It stands for you only look once. It's a real-time object detection framework. Uh, it works in a single pass. Uh, it processes the entire frame in one go, so you do get a significant speed advantage over some other models. And you can do it, um, you can do really high speed stuff with a lot, not a lot of power. So from YOLO, here's kind of a quick overview from their site, uh, from their GitHub, where they talk about, you know, new classification, which shows uh, what's in the photo. Um, and we specifically looked at both the classification, detection, and segmentation as part of our, our work on the uh, solid M drives. So this is a, I know it's a little small, I'm sorry, this is the best image I had from FMS, but we were set up a booth. Uh, we were capturing 1080p video uh, and recording it. We were doing the real-time processing at 30 FPS, logging all of the output. It may be a little difficult to read, but on the screen, there's five people detected, a uh, backpack or two, someone's holding a cell phone, a teddy bear. Uh, we're doing it in about 68 milliseconds. All while we're hitting the uh, drives at 30, we were seeing fluctuations between 38 and 40 gigs per second across the canisters. So logging all that stuff in, um, Putting it in the database, we saw loads of performance available uh, for edge inferencing there, um, which kind of leaves us, you know, we still got a little bit of overhead. So uh, what do we do now? Uh, we run a doomed server on it too. <laughs> so we drew, we, we slapped together very quickly, um, reinforced learning. AI Doom player, multiplayer experience. Um, we had it available for folks to try out. We had natural language processing in there for um, some of the chat to kind of show how that works. And we had that all running. Uh, we had an older semi-period correct laptop that could run DOS uh, running the original or as close to the original and on bare metal as we could get. And uh, had loads of overhead in there. Um, great platform, great drives, um, all this stuff. So, that's the first half of my presentation. Uh, so appreciate everyone. Uh, we had Dave from Cheetah Raid who wasn't able to make it, and then Janice, Robert, and Tamid, obviously, for making it all possible. Kevin's cool, too. <laughs> so this next, uh, there was someone earlier who asked about astrophotography. And uh, I'm really glad you did, because we're going to get edgy. Um, so. Once again, uh, storage review, uh, independent storage and news coverage authority. We do our own independent testing validation. We'll put stuff in interesting scenarios, do our own research. And uh, we do have a Kevin, and that's how he applies thermal paste, the spatula. So traditional, not necessarily traditional, but a lot of topics in the uh, edge computing, 
talk about things like uh, the industrial, healthcare, agricultural, uh, smart cities, uh, security cameras, virtual reality, content delivery, that kind of stuff. But I need to get a little bit edgier than that. And I want to take this out to the far edge. And I want to take us to the far, far edge, the final frontier. <laughs> and in order to get there, we don't have the budget to get a rocket from Elon yet. So we're going to do some astrophotography. Um, <laughs> What is it high level for everybody? Uh, it's both art and science capturing space stuff. Uh, you can use a myriad of hardware, telescopes, DSLRs, or dedicated cameras, lots of filtering, specialized mounts, specialized tracking systems. And you can get pictures. There's a couple different uh, specialized parts here. There's deep sky, galaxies, and nebula like you just saw. You can do planetary things like Moon or Mars or Saturn or Jupiter, or you can do wide field. A lot of times you'll see uh, come across social media uh, where you get star trails or big Milky Way. But there's some challenges that come along this with this. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of things that can go wrong uh, when you get back inside after a late night session, or maybe if you have a remote observatory somewhere. Uh, dealing with these. Uh, after the fact can be highly frustrating if you don't have a way to detect them on the fly. So overall your workflow, this is like kind of an ideal edge computing thing. It's, you know, you've got remote control of equipment, USB or serial is very typical. You're working on a limited power budget. Personally, I stay on trying to have to stand under about a hundred watt power budget. Um, sometimes you got to take into account an internet connectivity. Starlink has helped bring that challenge down a lot, but 5G or LTE or even 3G can be Problematic when you're moving large pictures like 62 megabyte raw images across the wire and you're trying to generate, you know, eight gigs an hour of information. So looking at how SolidIMS QLC helps that, um, we're addressing weather challenges, basically everything that exists out there, uh, power loss possibilities, and we want to maximize the amount of data that we collect, whether you're in a semi-permanent remote observatory, um, so you can spend time capturing all night and deal with the processing in the day and we can overcome that with real time processing, or even if you're at a temporary setup, you just take out with you out camping, uh, or your favorite spot, um, real time processing, you can be a little less selective on exactly how you're doing it and, uh, keep everything because you have the density to deal with it from a long trip and not have to throw away things that may have valuable data in them. Um, so yeah, we end up with uh, much more redundant stuff. We can take higher resolution images. We can get larger, uh, larger images, multi-night projects. Um, you can go back in the potential uh, to track uh, across, um, you know, different asteroids. There's been amateurs who keep every subframe, and they've detected uh, asteroids or other. Um, celestial stuff because they have the ability to keep it all with something as dense or something a large enough drive. Uh, it saves, uh, saves a little bit of time. So we're taking a look. This is a future project we're working on right now on how do we get a little bit better. So there's work being done in the community around uh, convolutional neural network architecture, uh, specifically for image clarification. Um, it minimizes our artifacting commonly seen in traditional algorithms. And uh, we've been working on it, testing it extensively. Uh, we've got some solid ion flash that's running on it and doing some training. Uh, and and just iterating through using both Hubble, uh, Hubble images from NASA as well as stuff that we've crowdsourced from the community. Um, the ultimate goal is to get this integrated into some more real work time flows that can uh, real time workflows that can generate cleaner output and uh, get rid of some of those challenges that we talked about. So. In the interest of time, I'm going to go a little quick here. Uh, we will just talk about this again in the future, but the. Neural network basically take builds upon existing um, algorithms and and helps the uh, it, it 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 applies different PSF estimations as well as other artifact reduction stuff in order to um, provide a clearer images. Uh, we're training specifically right now on astrophotography, but this is applicable for different data sets depending on what you put in. Um, it's significantly processing as much data right now. Um, so we're focusing only on one. Um, 
So what does this look like? Uh, here's kind of an example. Uh, on the left is a blurred kind of image of a globular cluster. And after passing it through the network, this is where we're at, where we're basically minimizing the noise for the processing and sharpening up. Um, this is a little different than like a generative AI that's trying to reconstruct data that's not there. It's trying to more cleanly process a existing data set and not introduce new artifacts or anything. Um, so coming together, you know, if we could get some sort of total AI assistant for this kind of processing into the edge, talk about the noise reduction, object removal, uh, removal from things like planes or satellites passing through vibrations from stuff going nearby. Um, if we can, we can work on this and use this to help pass the information back in and feed it back in to cope with different anomalies that can happen so you can maximize your uh, capture abilities. And having the QLC there and being able to hit it and process a bunch of images at the same time, process them together and independently with the speed and the robustness of them, we get uh, some pretty incredible uh, possibilities that we can um, work through. So here's another quick uh, for a Galaxy uh, again, it's still a work in progress novel, uh, but we're we're getting there. Um, so yeah, so why did we choose to work with Solidime on this? Again, their robustness. Uh, they are edge computing ready. They're nice low power devices. They handle power fluctuations um, and the unmatched density too. You don't want to be dragging out a ton of equipment. The smaller device that you can get uh, with you, um, the the better time that you're going to have. So other applications that this has, um, we can talk through with like, uh, we got metal, medical imaging. So at the edge, applying these types of models to MRIs and CT scans, which also generate even more amounts of data, um, can help provide more accurate or quicker diagnoses uh, for that are ultrasounds, atmospheric sciences, Oceanography, which is a really cool thing uh, with uh, applying this to something like submersible uh, uh, sonar or radar or other imaging techniques to help, uh, you know, provide better information there. And then, of course, uh, standard, you know, computer vision robotics uh, or uh, autonomous vehicles getting, uh, you know, real time inferencing, getting better, clearer images to help them make better uh, decisions uh, in real time. 